Okay, this is a video showing a run through of the proposed 2022 sportsman sequence in a super decathlon. As of uh, this date, it isn't finalized, so be alert for changes to what I'm flying here. Here's the sequence. I've redrawn it slightly from the IAC version to make it more readable. It's a pretty standard sportsman sequence, except that once again, there are no Y axis lines. I'm not sure what they're thinking. Because if you're good enough to win cheat, you're probably going to win sportsman category anyway. Um, for the rest of us, it's probably just showing whether you're good enough to keep track of your position in the box and know to take a break, which is cheap in sportsman. So do it if you need it. The camera is a Garmin Verb Ultra 30. It's mounted ahead and to the right of the pilot and pointed diagonally so that the sighting device is on one side and straight forward ahead on the other side of the screen. This gives a little distortion on the forward view, so keep that in mind when you're watching this. The sighting device is parallel to the vertical and diagonal lines, but not lined up on them. That's where my head is, and there's not room for both. The metrics displayed on the screen are pretty useless for viewing these maneuvers, um, and I've positioned the camera so that you can at least partly see the panel instruments, mostly the altimeter. So let's go. You first enter the box as far upwind as you can without irritating the judges. Okay, wing wag is mandatory. Consider it figure zero and practice it like everything else. Wag towards the judges. 45 upline. Doesn't take long in a decathlon. Push out, cut the power, one and a half turn spin. Given a choice of directions, I'm always going left. Pull out and a hammerhead on the other side of center box. Loop in the center. The loops and videos are even harder to judge than in the cockpit, so you're not going to get that much information out of watching this. Although the altimeter is kind of handy to see whether you're ending on altitude. In this case, I think I'm ending about 100 feet low. Now it gets a little interesting. Hopefully you've got enough speed built up for the Immelman. Half loop up, roll to upright. And you're going to have to do a roll at that low airspeed. Judges are watching this. 180 degree turn, do it upwind. Uh, you can try to stretch out the turn radius, but I usually just mess it up when I try to do that. It doesn't really get much wind correction out of it. Now part to be careful with, a nice crisp 45 degree push down. Not something you do often in a decathlon. And then a pull up for a 5 8 loop with a roll on top. I'd recommend cutting power on that 45 down until you get a handle on your air speeds. Move to the other side of the box and then a split S. Roll inverted and pull. Again, I'd be prepared to pull the power a little bit right after the roll to make sure you don't build up too much speed until you know what you're doing. Pull, 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 Humpty Bump. Come a little positive up on the line there, canopy towards the sky, and a little negative down on that line. What I call a shark's tooth, vertical up, set the line, pull on your back to 45 down with a point roll, 
point upright and you're done. So there's nothing dramatic about this sequence. Start up wind, be prepared to take a repositioning break if you've got a y-axis wind and watch your speeds. I lost 1,300 feet, I think, on this sequence. It was a cool day, but I wasn't really attempting to do any energy management, so it's pretty flyable with a super decathlon. I prefer to keep my decathlon under 160 miles an hour, uh, just because I don't consider them very durable. If I was renting it out, I'd probably check out my renters pretty carefully on those problematic figures and train them to start with power reductions until we were both confident they had a handle on it. That's it. Thanks for watching.